Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, Theresa May is in Brussels today for her very first EU summit. Russia's involvement in Syria and the immigration crisis are on the main agenda. But we're told the Prime Minister will tell the men and women, who are for now at least still her fellow EU leaders, that there will be no second referendum and that she wants our departure to be smooth, constructive and orderly. Well, back at Westminster, the Brexit Secretary, David Davis, has been taking questions from MPs, including his Labour opposite number, Keir Starmer. Uh, yesterday, Mr Speaker, I wrote to the Secretary of State to ask a very simple question. When will the plans be made available? The Secretary of State replied promptly to my letter, uh, but failed to answer that central question. Uh, so I'm going to ask him again. When will the Government plans for leaving the EU be made available to this House? It's always been our intention that Parliament should be engaged throughout. However, the House also agreed what I think is a vital caveat, that such a process must respect the decision of the UK when they vote to leave the EU in, on 23rd June and does not undermine the negotiating position of the Government. So there will be a balance to be struck between transparency and good negotiating practice, and I am confident we can strike that balance. That was David Davis. Well, Remain supporting MPs are showing no signs of letting up on the pressure on the government over Brexit, with many demanding a vote on our future relationship with the EU. Well, to discuss this, we're joined now by the Conservative MP Oliver Dowden. Welcome back to The Daily Politics. Now, both of you voted Remain. We're not, excuse me, we're not talking about the rights and wrongs of the vote, but you do have different views on how to go forward from here. Oliver Dowden, broadly, you've accepted the vote. Indeed. You haven't, it seems, Nick Clegg. Why not? I've accepted the vote entirely. We're going to leave the European Union. What uh, wasn't put before the British people on the 23rd of June and therefore needs to be subject to proper scrutiny and debate and accountability is how you leave. There are a myriad different ways you can leave this club. There isn't one simple, uh, uh, there isn't one simple sort of form of Brexit. And since the Brexiteers themselves didn't deign to spell that out to the British people, not least because they couldn't agree amongst themselves what Brexit meant. That is still an open question and it's quite right for Parliament, quite right for MPs like, like Oliver and myself to say to the executive, yes, you have a mandate to pull us out of the European Union. <laughs> How you do it, however, is something which should be uh, subject to open debate and scrutiny. But you want Parliament to vote before triggering Article 50. So you want to see the plans of the negotiation from the government before Article 50 is even triggered. You also want a second referendum on the terms of the deal at the end of the process. I mean, Everything that you are doing suggests you want to prolong this whole process, that you are hoping in some way to stay, if not as a full member of the EU, you want to stay very closely aligned. It doesn't like, sound like you've accepted it at all. No, I think there's a huge difference between sort of denying... I'm not, a sort of, I'm not in denial about the vote on the 23rd of June. I wish it had been otherwise. But you are trying somehow no. to reverse it. No, not at all. We're just saying that the plans of how you leave the European Union, which beg very fundamental questions. Do you stay part of the customs union or not? Do you remain part of the single market or not? Do you continue to make financial <coughs> contributions or not? If you remain part of, for instance, the crime-fighting measures in the European Union that the government has said they want to continue to participate in, how do you do that? What does that mean for our law? What does that mean for our budgetary contributions? All of the, in other words, there's a huge spectrum. Now, my own view, for, for what it's worth, is that people voted for Brexit, as George Osborne has pointed out, they didn't necessarily vote for hard Brexit. And that's, and that's where I think it is right that the government should Which be subject to Which, in your mind, means scrutiny. leaving the sing single market. Are you saying, though, that Remainers, I and mean, you were a Remainer, but yes. a Remainer like Nick Clegg and Ed Miliband should just shut up and go away? That they shouldn't express the views that we are now hearing from Nick Clegg? Because that's just not how politics works. No, I'm not saying that at all. And I think it's very important that Parliament debates and scrutinises the terms of our exit. As you've seen, we've been discussing it today. Nick and I have both contributed to various uh, statements that have occurred. The, Parliament's going to in, uh, the government's going to introduce a great repeal bill. We will debate that endlessly. Where I disagree with uh, Nick is about the need to have a vote on invoking Article 50. Because I, as I see it, we in Parliament decided by a majority of six to one to give the power to the British people. We effectively delegated that decision to the British people. There was a strong argument over it, there was a record turnout, and people decided to leave the European Union. 
the only consequence of that is to invoke Article 50. So I can't see the point in having a vote on Article 50 because it's perfectly clear mm. what the British people want us can, to do. Can I draw a what happens? Can I draw a which might be helpful? Article 50, it, it, it's, just a, it's just like a stopwatch. That's all it is. It's just a mechanism. So right? why do you want to vote? No, we want to vote on what the substantive plan yeah. to leave the European Union is. And that is crucially important. And what if happens just, if it's voted I, I, down? Let's just, so what happens if it's voted then, down? Then if the, the government plan... will need to go back to the drawing board and make right. sure that it presents a negotiating mandate which takes us out of the European Union. Union, which is legal, which is workable, and here's the crucial thing. Well, hang on, what's, what's, is, not, what's not legal or workable about leaving the single market? Well, I, don't, I, don't, I met thousands of Brexit voters in South Yorkshire and Sheffield. I spent a lot of time behind trestle tables on sure. the doorstep. I didn't, and lots of Brexit voters said to me they wanted because of immigration, because they didn't like this or they didn't like that. Mm. Not a single voter who voted Brexit who I met, I agree it's an unscientific sample, but I reckon it's pretty representative, said the reason we want to leave the European Union is we want to stop British exporters from their untrammeled access to our large markets in Europe. No one said that. No right. one wants that. And yet, apparently, if you listen to Liam Fox and David Davis, that is what they want to do. I would argue they don't have a mandate to do that. They have a mandate to pull us out of the European Union. They do not have a mandate to, to inflict are you economic saying that people self didn't, Are you saying that people didn't know that that's what was on the table during the campaign, was but to you, leave the single market? It wasn't even debated. Do you know why? Well, hang on. Because the Brexiteers couldn't agree amongst themselves. So well, Boris Johnson said we'll stay in the single market. Michael Gove said we wouldn't. No. Nigel... Well, well, hang on, Boris Johnson said he, was, he did want to leave the single market. Let's have a look. At, we've put together some of what people said at the time. Let's have a look. The British public would be voting, if we leave, would be to leave the EU and leave the single market. Should we come out the single market? I, I think that that is almost certainly would be the case, yes. Do you want us to stay inside the single market, yes or no? No, we should be outside the single market. I had uh, Michael Gove in that chair and I said, after Brexit, will we be in the European single market, yes or no? And he said, no. And he was right. So we won't be in He's the European right. single Michael, market. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. We'd be out of the single market. That's the, the reality. Britain would be quitting. The, quitting the single market. People did know that that was the proposition on the table. If you voted to leave on the 23rd of June, voted to leave the EU, means yeah. we will leave yeah. the with, single with, market. With the greatest, I think it's, it, it's a huge difference between cobbling together some clips from... But, no, hang on. Thousands and thousands of minutes of debate and what the Brexit, Brexit campaign said to the British people. They said, it's very important this, they said, most prominently, you'll get 350 million quid for the NHS every week. They said 80 million Turks might come here very soon. They did not say with one voice, they absolutely did not say with one voice, that they believe that leaving the European Union meant leaving the customs union and leaving the single market and stopping British well, people exporters. People will make up their own mind there, Nick Clay, but I think it was pretty clear those senior politicians on the Leave side were saying we would leave the single market. But to take Nick Clegg's point that that wasn't, perhaps, in some people's mind, the actual focal point of the campaign, do you accept that, that perhaps people didn't realise it would mean coming out of the single market? No, I, I completely disagree, and it's not just those quotes as powerful as they are. Um, Nick and I both um, served the coalition government, albeit in very different capacities, mine the far, far more junior capacity. But this is one of the central fault lines running through the coalition. I remember that David Cameron wanted to be able to get control of immigration. In particular, there was a large public disaffection about the hundreds of thousands of people who'd come from Eastern Europe and were allowed completely free access to the United Kingdom and they felt they hadn't had a say about it. Now, the first thing we tried to do was we tried to look at the existing rules of the single market and see if we could control it. We couldn't. The next proposition was that David Cameron tried to renegotiate in order to, to control immigration. He made some progress, but broadly the British people didn't feel he succeeded. We then had a referendum where essentially the argument was on the one side from Brexit, they said that we should be able to take back control and principally take back control of our borders and our laws. And on the other side, the Remain side made the argument that there would be a significant economic cost to this. Now, I was a reluctant Remainer. Whilst I had great sympathy for the first arguments, I thought the economics trumped it. But that was what the debate was about. Right. So you can't, you can't disentangle uh, being a member of the European Union from being a member of the single market because free movement and mass migration was the thing that really turbocharged well, this debate. And isn't, that's as, as true, a, isn't it? Well, it's, as a matter of fact, it is not true. So there are countries which are not members of the European Union, which do, which do have full participation in the single market and have greater powers to decide who comes in and out of which, their country. Which, country, which countries have look, complete, look, complete look, curbs on migration in that regard? Not, complete, in the way... not, not complete curbs. Right. Now, the Norwegians, for instance, they don't exercise the powers in full, but they have great... They retain greater powers about who comes in and out but of But do country. you accept that if we were to become like Norway, to be part mm. of the 
European economic area, we wouldn't have left the EU. We would still be under the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. We would have to accept some freedom of movement because it is such a cornerstone of the EU. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we would be defying the will of the people who voted to leave. So I'd make a distinction. I, I personally don't buy and have never accepted uh, this uh, argument that is made, by the way, not just on this side of the channel, but on the other side of the channel, that there is some immutable biblical link between membership of the single market and the rules of, of, of freedom of movement. Well, that's certainly not what anyone says. I mean, they say there is. I mean, they well, say that's no, the absolute no, cornerstone no, no, and that's no. why we have to they, come... No, and can, can I, I make it very, clear, very yeah. clear? There's a distinction. I don't believe that's the case, and there are plenty of other European countries which are under a great deal of pressure about freedom of movement and immigration as well, and would, in my view, entertain a Europe-wide solution to that. What is not possible... Well, what it, but they wouldn't really, do it before the referendum during the negotiation with David Cameron. Well, firstly, the referendum now happened, and so that's delivered a great shock to the rest of Europe. Secondly, the public concerns about immigration elsewhere have increased considerably. But what you can't navigate your way around, you're quite right, is to say that you are going to have untrammeled access to a marketplace of rules mm. and not abide by those rules. You're right. That is a rock and a hard place. So, but leaving the single market, if you don't leave the single market, you don't leave the EU. No, you do. There are countries which, have, which are in the single market and are not members of the EU. Right. That already exists. Right. I mean, it, it's not just Ramoners, as they are uh, called, who are divided on the Brexit detail. It is the split within government too, isn't it? So it's not just easy to say, to point the finger at Nick Clegg or at Ed Miliband and say they just can't accept the result. These are debates that are going on at the heart of government at Cabinet level. Well, as far as I can see, the Prime Minister has set out a pretty clear position, which is she's accepted the will of the British people that they want to control migration and have the, the best possible economic deal. But on Nick's point, if it was possible to do this, if it was possible to change the single market rules, we would have done it before. We desperately wanted to be able yeah. to do it well, and we failed to do it. The big point is, is the referendums happen and now and we are Cameron saying we're kept leaving. David Cameron kept telling them, I know this, but I kept telling them, I'm going to win, I'm going to win, it's no problem. They didn't feel under any pressure prior to the referendum in the way that they, well, they do just, now. Just on that point, uh, first of all, it is one of the four fundamental principles of the single market alongside free movement of labour, goods and services. And secondly, Angela Merkel, from her particular background, is very attached to, to free movement. She was a child of Eastern Europe. There was no sign at all. She was absolutely clear to the Prime Minister she was not going to concede on this. And I can't see that even with this massive shock, they're going to allow Britain to have its own sweetheart deal, as, as was put no, no, by the... Sweet, I think, you... let, let me point to one thing. Finally. On the Austrian-Italian border, there is now barbed wire fencing, right? So freedom of movement is already being curbed physically by countries who nominally... But, that, so, no, no, but not within EU citizens, though. No, hang on. They are putting border checks now throughout the, at the very heart of the European Union. Yeah, so you... things have moved on. I personally think if, if Theresa May was smart about it, she could encourage other European countries to introduce a, an emergency break, in effect, across the whole of Europe in exchange for a sensible approach from Britain to our continued access but, but to the Nick, single market. But, Nick, you know that that is a separate point. We already have border controls in the United Kingdom. Kingdom. The There's point, the, exactly, and th those border controls are about lim about re-establishing border controls. They're not about limiting the number right. of people from other sure. countries coming in, and that's the rub. People feel that hundreds of thousands of people came here. They have no way of controlling it, and they never consent to it. And I got a very clear message from the referendum on that. Just finally, yes or no? Mm. If the plan for a second referendum went ahead, which it doesn't look like it would on the deal, and the country voted it down, would we still be in the EU and stay in the EU? Gosh, that's a legally complex thing. But would uh, it reverse it? Isn't that what you're trying for? No, what I'm saying is I want accountability for the decisions which the government now takes about how we leave the European Union. Not question the principle that we are going to, because that decision has been taken. But we weren't given, a, and we still haven't been given, a detailed depiction of what Brexit actually looks like in practice. All right, Oliver Dowden, thank you. Thank you. I've been getting away with it all my